Hey guys, it's Blake at the Haywire Effect, back again to ruin your night with some more comedy. I'm going to be taking a look back at the Audience Award winners from this last year and just kind of spoofing them a little bit. I'm not going to be going apeshit haywire like I usually do on things because, let's face it, I don't want to become the most hated filmmaker in Michigan. So, sit back, stuff your face with some fucking popcorn, relax, and strap your asses in because it is the best of the Mitt Movie Project's 2011 lineup right now. First on our list is a promotional trailer directed by Francis Sampier and written by Jean-Claude called CP Time. Now what the hell does that mean? Cerebral palsy? See, that's nice. All kidding aside, the story of this flick, absolutely stellar. A scientist grows up obsessed with becoming the world's first time traveler so that he can reverse the tragedy he saw as a little boy when his father was murdered in the ensuing riots that happened after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The idea being to go back in time and save his father by saving the life of Dr. King. Whoa, this is heavy. But this raises a ton of moral conundrums. People who exist could cease to exist. People who do not exist can come into being. Now, as serious as all this sounds, the trailer makes it sound like good can't be fun. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at some of the random shit that happens. Oh, crackhead. There's a crackhead. Do not adjust your eyes. You just saw that. You just saw a dude unloading an assault weapon at the broadside of a barn. Now, I love good can't be fun as much as the next guy, but this? A little weird. Not that you can't do it. I mean, I personally think that you can joke about anything. But this is one of the defining tragedies of modern times. I mean, it's up there with 9-11, the JFK assassination, and the Twilight Saga. But hey, you can't judge a movie based on a bunch of clips out of context. But CP time? I'm gonna Google it. Canadian Pacific Railway Limited on the New York Stock Exchange. Pretty sure that's not it. Let's try Urban Dictionary. Just kidding. It means colored people time. Next up is Eddie's Casket Shop. Now, I defy anyone to not laugh their ass off at this movie. I would actually love to see a TV series developed about this. All these conflicting personalities trying to make a living in one of the unlikeliest of vocations. Just one thing. How bad do you have to suck ass as a salesman to get stuck on casket duty? Shut the hell up, God damn it! We got this chucklehead trying to sell a casket to these two grieving patrons. What can I do? to put your dead dad in a casket today. Then we have the alien love child of Marcel Marceau and Tommy Chong. <laughs> and then we got this high-strung son of a bitch who can't keep his grievances for the water cooler. Does he even know who I am? I've sold caskets nationwide, pal, and if you could possibly- Get out! How can I possibly get my fucking bonus when he's sticking everything up around here? <laughs> The acting is just the right touch of over the top, all the visual gags work. I mean, it's just a laugh riot, and I hope there's more where that came from. Joe, brought out the wrong casket! I'm sorry. This is our timeshare model. Created and directed by Matt Cantu and co-winner for short of the year, it's The Zombie Factor. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not pronouncing that right. It's pronounced... Zombie Factor! If 
the world erupted into a zombie holocaust and the survivors had to make reality television out of it, it would look exactly like the zombie factor. A menagerie of schmucks are plucked from the black hole of reality TV cliché and dropped into an enclosed zoo with one goal, survive. And of course, along the way, there's hijinks, fighting, and probably herpes. She's looking for a d and you know, I'm, I'm the type of guy who's gonna give it to her. The style here is within a flea's pubic hair of perfect. The design, the testimonials, the alleged drama, and the love and blood drenched homages to the classic films of George A. Romero, it's all terrific. Now with that being said, let me ask a perfectly legitimate question. How the fuck am I supposed to spoof a spoof that's spoofing two genres that are already spoofs of the human condition? It sounds like a damn zen riddle. Finish it. Okay, okay, fine. Well, I'm gonna go and get a beer, but in the meantime, you guys can sit back and play a little game called Is It Racist? First of all, I gotta deal with the gay dude, you know, dropping stuff everywhere and knocking over lamps. You know, like, how, how's you gonna turn the light off and you blindfold it? Really? Yeah, it's hard to see light with a blindfold. Yeah, it's hard to see you! <laughs> Yeah, sue me, I laughed. But hey, this was the funniest movie shown at the Mitten, and it pleases both of its fan bases, zombie fans and reality TV haters. I would be both. My favorite character, and I think a lot of people would agree, was Kareem. Everything out of this guy's mouth was just funny as hell. Man, I murked that motherfucker, son. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we do over here in the West Side, baby. I told you I'm the number one zombie killer around these parts, man. I just hope and pray that Mad Can 2 continues to ride this wave of success and take this project to the next logical step. The zombie factor keeps up with the Kardashians. Why, you ask? Because that family is a herpes outbreak on the collective anus of American culture, and I want to see them and all of their surgically enhanced parts torn to shreds in a swarm of zombie chaos. I don't even understand how these people can live like this. Definitely the winner for best title is Menage de Trois, written and directed by Jeremy Alston. And you can pretty much tell what it's about. There's fucking. John is a stockbroker turned pop delivery guy making a stop off in the world's kinkiest Aco when he has a meet cute with a young blonde named Ashley. Oh snap. Oh, um, guys, can we keep the shots up here? Thanks. I mean, shit, bravo on the casting here. I mean, can you think of anything that could make this girl even sexier? So they go out for coffee, and that's when Ashley's friend Hannah shows up, and shit gets real. Yeah, well, Ashley and I share activities. There's a ton of double entendres and some obvious euphemistic imagery. What do you say we get out of here and have some real fun? What about Ashley? Don't worry. She can come too. But before any successful vaginal penetration can begin, we gotta shoot a vodka commercial! Stay thirsty, my friends. Next up is a prison drama, or maybe it's a county jail drama. Anyway, it's called The Tank, directed by Joseph Johnston, or as I like to call it, the Shaw Tank Redemption. There must be a con like me in every prison in America. I'm the guy who can get it for you. Cigarettes, a bag of reefer, if that's your thing. This was one of the longer shorts that was shown, but very well paced. We get introduced to a room full of convicts all awaiting their day in court, and every few minutes the monotony of the scenery gets broken up by sit-downs with the investigating detective. So I'll be out of here by the fucking end of the day. You can believe that. Because of this, we get to know everyone, and they all feel fleshed out, like this guy. I uh, thought you said you was from the fucking hood. You ain't never even been to county, has you? Man, dog, I've been in and out of every cage down river. Popo busted in my crib. They took all my rocks, powder, and trees, man. I had 80 G's saved up, man. They took my whole fucking stack. You know what I think? I think you're full of shit. You grew up on Grossia with both parents. You went to one of the best schools in the state. You live in mom and daddy's basement playing Xbox all day. And now you're here. <laughs> but the movie really belongs to these guys, neither of whom have acted before, but I guarantee you'd never know what to watch them. 
The tank touches on something I've always noticed of career criminals in movies, as well as in real life. Half of their persona is ego, and the other half is pure bullshit. In just shy of a half hour, the tank manages to create fully realized characters, probe the criminal mind, and even squeezes in an awesome twist ending. Yo, check this shit out, man. Fuck. Motherfucker. Fucking. 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 Fuck, 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 stick, fuck, 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 now we have Moro Road, another trailer directed by Francis Sampier, who I've noticed has a fetish for text on colored smoke. Also returning is the scientist from CP Time, this time playing a drummer at a house party that suddenly gets a case of the Mondays when the cast gets attacked by special effects. The story is apparently based on a real Michigan legend about a mother who lost her infant child and has never stopped looking. Even in the afterlife. The campy feel that kind of worried me about the CP time trailer really works for this one. Besides, if there's ever been a state more full of filmmakers who dig on local legends and B-movie horror, it's fucking Michigan. Groovy. Speaking of local legends, did you guys get a load of this? They got Ellen Sandweiss to be in this flick. Now, if you don't remember who she is off the top of your head, maybe this will refresh your memory. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, there's nothing like a little tree rape to bring those old memories up to a high gloss shine. The Family Affair, written and directed by Christopher Karam. This is classic crime formula about a guy who's wasted his adult life being an errand boy for a drug dealer and decides that this last job is, well, the last job. This is it. After this job, I'm done. And why? Because he wants to repair his relationship with his son. And he decides the best way to do that is to arm the little prick. Hey, Luke, wait. Come on. I want you to have this. What is it? It's your grandfather's pocket knife. Always the best gift for the coked up teenager who hates your fucking guts. Thanks, Dad! Little does he know that his son is already well acquainted with drugs and drug dealers, and in fact, this last job is a delivery to this kid's new best buddy, Sully. That works. No, not that one. He unknowingly sets up a meet with this kid in a motel room and does his usual inspection of the goods only to find out that his boss had planned to give him the proverbial farewell dick in the ass. Michael, it's been a great run. It really has. If you really want out, survive. Oh come on, he really didn't see that coming? Dude, you work for a fucking drug dealer. Although to be fair, I don't know the guy. I honestly don't know any drug dealers. But, I mean, they can't all be obviously sleazy, malevolent, money-grubbing douchebags. But me? Never. Yeah, this is all pretty much formula, but it's about the journey, not the destination. I mean, we don't pay ten bucks to see romantic comedies because we're wondering how the fucking thing's gonna end. Some of us do it to score a quick dick in the popcorn hand job. I know. I spoil you. Well, not, not me, personally. I'm just saying. Some... Other people might- Oh, piss off! Why are you torturing me like this? Why? Emma, made by Morgan Lawrence. In all honesty, there's not too much to say about this one. It's cute, it's funny, it's adorable. It's fucking claymation, which has to be the most difficult and tedious of all the animation styles employed by filmmakers. And to see it attempted with such a fully realized story by a high school student is pretty damn amazing. And I just love how she took these age-old euphemisms and manifested them literally. Emma wakes up and puts on her face so she can meet the new neighbor boy next door. I knew it! I knew I wasn't crazy! Last week I did see a woman take her face off at the bus stop. Emma lets the cat out of the bag. Yeah, you did. You know, I feel bad even trying to spoof this movie because it's so cute. It'd be like kicking a baby in the balls. I mean, you just don't do that. And finally, the big motherfucker, Amendment. 
The other co-winner for short film of the year, co-written, directed, produced, scored, edited, and basically birthed from the proverbial film vagina of Tom Nahas. This is another one that's tough to spoof because it's just so damn serious. We have two main characters both trying to make sense of their lives after tragedy strikes. God has not forgotten about you, Michael. I have to okay. go. He's, he's reminded me enough times that he knows right where I live. Top of the world? Talk of the bay? I'm out. Sarah loses her police officer dad in the line of duty. Thank you, it's wonderful. Oh, you're welcome, sweetie. I love you. And Mike loses his daughter to a freak accident. <laughs> and later loses his wife. Sign the papers, Michael. Flashbacks and video footage establish the missing relationships very well and help set us up for what's to come. That's right! Oh, not Harry! Remember me! Ham, Hammy, we forgot you. You forgot old Hammy again! Okay, Hammy is weird. Which is the inevitable meeting between Mike and Sarah. It doesn't happen the way we'd expect, though. They bump into each other once at a dairy bar. Well, what the hell does she think she's gonna buy with 43 cents? This ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. Thank you. And again later on in the street. Sorry. Fascinated with Sarah's picture taking, and I think honestly just missing the uniqueness of his daughter's view on things, Mike follows behind her to see what she sees. You know, as adorable as this is, this is a pinnacle example of how reliant a movie can be on a musical score to establish just the right mood. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Fucking creepy. The movie ends with another tragedy to bring things full circle, but I'll tell you what the real tragedy is. Not one of those pictures is gonna come out. Erased from existence. Well, there you have it. Another episode in the can made just for you at the Mitten Movie Project. I hope you liked it. Hope the directors of the shorts liked it as well. And if you want to see the rest of my reviews, you can go on to lightcraftentertainment.com. You'll find them there. And you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Send me your review suggestions. The next one up on the docket is the Immortal Santa Slashing Classic Silent Night, Deadly Night. So keep an eye out for that one. And if you want to see any of the shorts that we took a look at tonight, if you haven't seen them already, I'm going to be posting all available links and contact information when this review goes up online. So with that, I'm going to cut to my favorite title card from... That is fucking awesome, and that is damn right. See that, Snyder? Sit and spin, bitch. I'm out. Hope you all liked it. Hope the directors of the films enjoyed it. And if you want to go see my balls, they're right here. Like that? <laughs> this is why I don't fucking shave before I do these reviews usually.
Hi. Maple syrup. The pure stuff. It's not like it grows on trees. Yes, maple syrup does grow on trees, you stupid fucking c